Microwave here? Oh, that's all right. Don't worry about it. We're good. Tonight, and so is Brandon. 
All right, we got a tambourine player in the house, everybody. Tambourine player, professional.
that really just for today.
Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Father. Praise your mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Father. God, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Praise your mighty name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. Hallelujah. Yes, that's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. That's right. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise you. If your life, if you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God, you have nothing to worry about. That's right. That's right. That's right. If you have died, this is a scripture in Colossians. Hallelujah. You are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Yes. You have nothing. That's right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Praise you, Father. Thank you. You know, when we gather here, it is an important time. That's right. And we do want to encourage people during church to and ask that. When, when we're doing the music, we, we need to focus on that. We shouldn't be talking to people. That's right. Praise when God. When the preaching's going on, we shouldn't be talking to each other. And We need reverence and, and respect here, and, and we need people that have the ability to focus and pay attention uh, to God and to what's going on here and, and when the preaching's going on. Uh, we want every person in the room to be able to hear what's being said so yes so thank you we Lord. do want to bring this up every now and then that, that during during service mm -hmm. any part of the service please no conversations please no lighthearted talk and we and we shouldn't be screwing around on our phones and all that this should be a time where we're giving it to god where we're giving ourselves to god even if you don't know Jesus yet, even if you haven't turned your life over to Jesus yet, still when we're when we're here, we can be respectful towards God and the house of God. Amen. 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 Thank you, too. So it's good to see everybody tonight. Is your hand up, young man? Yeah, I want to know if I can say one thing real quick. One thing real quick. Yeah, one thing. Just to yes, next yeah. one more well, well, Do you want the a microphone, yeah. Yeah. sir? Okay. Watch it. You're taking a chance, Jeremiah. All right. <laughs> amen, amen. Welcome, everybody. Good to see everybody. Welcome. I just Thank wanted to kind of add on to what he said about, you know, paying attention and, you know, really, we're, we're here to, we're here for God, and that's what we need to be here for. And I just wanted one little suggestion. As far as people that smoke cigarettes, I would, I think it would be a good idea to try to refrain as much as you can to not do that during service. Mm -hmm. Come out, come on, brother. One little comment. That's right. Might be, might be That's cool, brothers. That's cool. That's really all I wanted to say, though. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah! That's uh, coming from a smoker, correct? Yeah. Just so people know. You are a smoker, but you're, you, and you're, you're work, you're going to let the Lord work on that, but you're, you're challenging the, the rest of the smokers. To, to, and I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Wait till after service. I think it's a good idea, Josh. That's right. Amen. 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 
And, and if anybody wants prayer to be delivered from cigarettes, that's right. Uh, Come on now. That too. I that's used to smoke cigarettes. I Amen. Used to smoke weed. What? Amen. I used to do a lot of stuff, like many of us have. Yeah. But the Lord Come on. helped me. The Lord took that from me. I had to cooperate with Him. Well, see, God's always ready. He's ready. God's always ready. That's right. Do you agree? Are you He's ready? ready? All right. Okay. To say yes. Are you ready to cooperate? That's right. Come on. Like whatever it is the Lord's asking from you, it's like we have to offer it up with a free hand. Like, okay, here it is, Lord, take it. Not, ooh, I don't want to, ooh, I don't want to give up the, the, the smokes or whatever it is. This goes way beyond smoking cigarettes. You know, but we, we need to offer it up to with, with a free hand to God. Lord, here it is. I give it up. I surrender. Help me, Lord. Help me. And He meets you. He, his grace is sufficient for us. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. Yes, thank so you. It's really good to see everybody tonight. Good to see everybody. So I'm going to go through some announcements. I'll be uh, calling up just, just before Warren Brother Joel and remind him I'll be calling him up to do the offering and talk about that uh, when I'm done with my announcements. <laughs> So we had a good day here yesterday. Amen. What did we... Oh, you, you're the perfect guy. Yeah. Uh. So, you young man. Now, you're you're a little newer in the Jesus house. What's your name? Dylan. Beck, didn't you recently get saved here? Give your life to Jesus? All right. Amen. So, tell us about the outreach yesterday. Tell us about the one before that, because I, I heard you talking about these things and I'm like this is the perfect guy to be like getting people going with these outreaches. Amen. Uh, well I know not last outreach but the one before um, they had two different uh, services come and um, they all handed out a lot of coats, a lot of different clothes. Um, everybody walked away with almost everything they needed. Every time every oh, wow. someone needed a coat they got a coat. We didn't have many pants, but all the shirts they needed, and every single person needed a coat walked away with a coat. Wow. Yeah. Good coats, car hearts, leather jackets. And uh, they needed them, so they got them. And um, every single person walked away with a smile on their face. Every single person came back later. And when they didn't even have to, they came back and said thank you so much. And uh, last outreach, um, they only had the one service, but a lot of people definitely needed really help. Um, I didn't really see that much because I was over there, but um, I know everybody definitely got help, and honestly, it turns a lot of people to God because they realize that there are people here to help. Yeah. That, you know, if you end up trying to reach out to God, people reach out to you, and I, it's just, it was really warming to see every single person just completely walk in a million times happier than they walked out. Mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I got way happier than walked in. Amen. 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 That's very good. That's very good. That's awesome. Thank you. And keep up the good work in the Jesus house. Um, <coughs> Amen. So, M Mike, I heard that you're supposed to share a short testimony. In fact, do you want to share it from your seat? Praise the Lord God Almighty. Um, I never did drugs, but I did a lot of drinking for a lot of years. And I learned that's what I right back in 1980, and I walked through it and walked away. And I've been free ever since. Amen. And um, I'm just going to share this. Um, the Lord, Lord, all these years I've been walking with the Lord, the Lord's done so much for life. And um, I, I, I got this, this band I had about, I got about eight years ago. It's an old four band. And um, then what happened, happened Friday, um, and uh, I went out and tried to start it, it wouldn't start. So I, I didn't do it on Friday, but I, I called AAA yesterday, and I thought it was just a battery, because I never replaced the battery in all these years I've had it. So, so, I, I, um, so, I, so I, I, I called AAA, and they came, and, I, and they started it up, and I put, put the battery in, and it cost me $146 for the battery. Um, Lord bless me. Lord bless me and take care of me. I, I don't have a kind of money on and uh, you just the, the I had some money and where I was able to do it. And then this morning, I get out and just drive my van up and it wouldn't start. And the, the, the lights are on. 
and for uh, for what they're short in 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 the, in, the, in the wiring system. So now I got I got to get that, and I'm praying and, and I know I I've been walking with the Lord a long time. I know what the Lord's done in my life a lot, and uh, He's set me free and He's given me uh, give me eternal life. And I've been walking in Amen. and I believe what the Word says. Amen. That's what we have to do is believe what the Word says. Amen. And, and we can get upset and cuss and swear and down and moan and groan, but that's not the answer. We need to rejoice in the Lord always. We need to spend time with Him, and fellowship Him, walk with Him, honor Him, put Him first. And he'll make a way to take care of that situation Woo! for you. But we got to put Him first. We got to honor Him and believe what the Word said. We got to know who we are in Christ and our authority. And believe what the words of the, yeah, the cover Papa. from the Bible, the, cover, the Bible cover to cover. We, and we have to know who we are. And then the Lord will make a way. So I uh, believe in the, now the Lord will make a way for me to get my van fixed. And uh, so, you know, so I know he's going to do it. Somehow, some way he'll do it. Amen. I just know he will. Amen. Because I've seen him do so much in my life. Amen. I got so much to share. He's done so much in my life. I got so much he's done. So you got to walk it and live it. Be the man and woman of yeah. God. Men and women of God. And Woo! you got to get off your butt and worship the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Lord. Come on. 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 Oh, man. Amen. Man. We need to get off our butts and worship the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. All right, we have a lot of announcements to get through a few more, so let's, let's do them. Thank you, Mike. That was a great testimony. Okay, so Demetrius, and I don't know if Brandon's helping you or not, but go ahead and bring up what you have. So this is going to be a little different, uh, and but we'll, we'll explain what's going on here. We have a little... Uh -oh. Something to bring up and show you. What's going on, Mark? <coughs> I have no yes. idea. So. <laughs> oh, let's, let's see if we can't get so I'll let them just get it up here first. What is this? What is that? Now come what front is center, that, huh? Front center, what is that, huh? See ya. What's going on, Brandon? <laughs> All right, so Brandon, your box isn't as visible. What do you got in there? Cookies. <laughs> Uh, peanut butter, chocolate chip, and sugar cookies, and... In baggies. Yeah, and mm -hmm. pretty much like rock candy, I don't know what you call it. Mm -hmm. And Dewan, you have uh, peanut fudge. butter fudge, oh, fudge. and uh, what was the other one? Maple fudge. Yeah. Okay, guys, so <laughs> here's the situation. Now, seeing desserts and sweets around here is not unusual at all. Thanks to special people like Marie that are always baking for us and a lot of things like that. But we have something uh, added on tonight and uh, this needed to happen. So some of you know who Dylan is. He's a carpenter that is here sometimes and he's uh, he has some health issues that he's currently struggling with. So we need to keep him in prayer. However, Dylan is a, is a really good cook. And, and, he, and he knows how to make desserts too. And what he had done about a week ago was he wanted to help raise money for the Mercy House, which if anyone doesn't know what the Mercy House was or is, the Mercy House was a house for women that we had here. And it was for battered women and broken women and we wanted to provide a Christian home for women. And so we had that for about eight years, and then the Mercy House fizzled out. But the long story short is, we are going to build a new home for the women. <coughs> a lot of you have heard about this. A lot of you have heard about this. And it is happening. There's definitely things happening behind the scenes. There's been some regular meetings uh, lately with business professionals who are just putting things together. And there will be a big fundraiser dinner April 23rd, I believe it is, and we'll keep announcing that. So back to the cookies and the fudge, because I know some of you didn't hear a word I said. You're just wondering, you're wondering about the cookies and the fudge. So the, to do to get this Mercy House back up off the ground, um, it's going to take a lot of money, and we know that our Lord owns the cattle on a thousand Amen. hills. Funds are no problem with God. And I think the Lord invites his people to participate. 
in what he's doing, and he invites us to serve him, and he invites us to help put things together. We are the hands and feet of the Lord in the earth. So God uses people. Everyone say God uses people. God uses people. God uses people to help raise money and do things. And Dylan wanted to help raise money for the women's house. And that is why he made all this fudge. They have they did not bring up here all they have. Back in that back corner where they came from, there's all kinds of peanut butter fudge, maple, I think it's called maple fudge, I believe that's the correct name of it. Oh, these cookies in the bags of cookies. So Dylan's plan, he made these to sell them. And the problem is, is that last weekend as he had rented out a booth at this place at Ava Quinder, he got very sick and he couldn't sell them. And all of a sudden we have all these desserts. And they end up in my car. <laughs> and I was supposed to bring them out like this last Sunday night, but my wife has been sick and we weren't here last Sunday night. So here's the bottom line. We're, the, this is here to sell, to raise money for the women's cool. homes. So okay. if you want to purchase any fudge cookies to help with the women's home, uh, you can see Dewan here. De his real name's Demetrius, right? Yeah. I just call him Dewan, right? That's my middle name. That is his middle. I started calling him Dewan randomly years ago, and I didn't even know that was his middle name. <coughs> but anyway, they're gonna have all this stuff back there. If anyone after church wants to go and purchase all this to help raise m money for the Mercy House, you can give the money to Demetrius. There's a price sign on the wall. It's, it's not expensive. It's really it's really good stuff. Like Dylan definitely knows what he's doing when he makes this stuff, and it's good. And I'm on a me and my wife are on a 40 day sugar fast that we started at the beginning of the year, so I can't have any. I've had this stuff behind sitting behind me in my vehicle wow. all week long through hunger, through yeah. stress, through all this. Temptation, see, the devil will tempt you. Yeah. We'll have it right there. Wow. Mm. But I didn't touch. Mm. I didn't touch. Amen. Amen. So anyway, thank you. And Dylan, you will probably see this. Lord, we just agree in prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. For total health, thank healing, you, Lord. Yeah. recovery. Yeah. In the name of Dylan. Dylan. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank so you. Guys, thank you for the visual. We want people to be able to see, explain. It will, there's a lot of it. And uh, Antonio, if you can make sure that afterwards, we'll, we'll pack up what we don't sell tonight, and we'll take it to Tuesday Night Fisherman's Net, which is my next announcement. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this Tuesday night, real quick, out in Utica and Hall Road area, we use we use the facilities of a great church called Fisherman's Net. We host a service out there once a month. We do it the third Tuesday evening every month. And it just so happens that uh, I, I don't know if all you guys will be back Tuesday night or some of you or whatever. <laughs> So Mark and the gang, whoever he's able to reel along, they will be leading worship out there again. Praise God. And uh, it's a whole other deal, but that's this Tuesday, 7 p.m. at Fisherman's Net Church. You can Google it, uh, 46026 Cass Avenue, but 7 p.m., that's where we will be. Mm -hmm. And we want to invite you to come on out. It's going to be a really good time. So we've had a couple birthdays this week, yeah. or there was one and there's about to be one, and there may be more that I don't know about. But first of all, we want to point out Mr. Asik, Jesus House Leader. He had a birthday last Monday. Oh, after you, huh? Last Monday. You did, and eh? Huh? Another birthday. In fact, this is really convenient. What? This is really convenient because it's Steve's birthday this Wednesday. Oh, Steve Arena, huh? This is convenient. Hi, Steve. We have right next to each other, so all the attention can be over here. Jesus house. And, and Marie has a cake. Oh, oh man. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. So let's sing one, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Stephen. I said, Happy birthday to you. All right, let's give these guys a Wow, man. 
man. That's awesome. Awesome. All right, all right. Well, God is good. So, mercy, O Sponge. God is good. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I heard Pastor Jeremiah is going to be speaking some more Sunday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, you're right. I mean, I'm not sure who Pastor Jeremiah is. There is someone named Jeremiah here. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Okay, so Pastor Mark. Yeah, right. Invited me to speak at his church this Sunday morning, this next Sunday morning, seven days from now. So I'll be out there. Yeah, thanks for the reminder. See, I, I like speaking at your church. I live so close. You know, it's like right around the corner. Like, this is easy, you know? It's like, you know, they come, me and Nicole are like, you just need to come here more often. Amen. But, um, Amen. but yeah, yeah, so that's always a good thing. And, and, and we're blessed with the presence here of Mark's uh, mother, Pat yes. Pastor, yes. Barbara King. Praise God, Barbara. Pastor Barbara King. God bless you, dear. Who, you know, unfortunately, recently has lost her husband of 60 years. Yeah. Pastor Clarence, yeah. a wonderful man of God, a lot of us Jesus, knew Jesus. him. And he passed away two, you. three months ago. And so now she's here tonight with yes. Brother Mark. And, and our prayers continue to go out for yes. you and family and yes thank you, you know, Lord. Your, your, your husband was a great man and yes boy right. he's walking in the streets of gold Amen. now with his youthful Amen. body and uh and we'll all be meeting him soon that's right sooner than later i got a feeling <laughs> keep that feeling going brother we'll, we'll, we'll feed on that soon even if it's 50 years from now that's still soon yeah. Yeah. okay so I believe I've gotten through what I'm what I was supposed to get through at this time. I'm gonna call up Brother Joel to talk about giving and off take up the offering and all that. Let's welcome up Brother Joel. Amen. Praise God. I was gonna share last week and um, I was prepared to share last week, but the Lord moved another way and was dealing with a lot of people's hearts and a lot of people responding to the movement of the Holy Spirit. And I was hoping that Pastor Kenny would not call me up. And he kind of pulled me aside and said, we're going to wait. And I go, that's good. We need to wait. Just let God move. And we'll talk about giving at the next meeting. So I just want to share. I just want to share. Um, can I share a little bit of the word with you all about giving, about tithing? And can I also share a little bit of just personal experience or testimony in my own life? If you don't mind, I just want to share and you all may not hear me, but if some, if just one of you hear me, it's going to be worth it. So the Bible says in Leviticus 27, 30, that in all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. Does anybody, does anybody not know what the word tithe means? Does anybody not know what that means? Raise your hand if you don't know what that means. Okay, since you all know what it means, somebody raise your hand and tell me what tithe means. Okay, go ahead, Brandon. Tithe is when you donate to a church. Okay. You're donating some sort of good. And can I give another response? Go ahead, you give another response. I believe it's 10% of your whole earnings. That's great. And, and, and now, now, I wish you both could have, could have heard what they both said, because here's the definition. Webster Dictionary, tithe. A tenth part of something, because you said goods, and you said... Uh, income, a tenth part of something paid in support of a religious organization. Hmm. Now, a tenth is 10% 10 of the gross. So let me explain it this way. If you have $1 income, how much is a tenth? Ten cents. And I want to take, I want to keep it that simple because it's that simple and we got to start there. At the end, at the end of this, I have the, the Bible talks about when you're faithful with a little, you'll be faithful with a much. Amen. If you don't give a dime, you won't give a hundred. It just it won't happen. But if you'll take ten cents off a dollar and by faith put it into the offering, local church, See, or the church, we come down here voluntarily and we minister 
as asked. And if we don't get asked, then we just sit here and want to be a blessing. Maybe we're just here to smile at you or, or just show you that this that God is still working in our lives. And we're just here to maybe pray with you or encourage you or smile at you or give you a hug. I give a lot of a lot of uh, fist bumps here. A lot of that's my thing. I know Pastor Steve likes the hug and the holding hands things. I'm, I'm, I'm getting into that, brother. Uh, good. But I'm a fist bumper, but we can talk to you. Amen. You know, but it's just good to see each other's eyeballs. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's here, right. I haven't seen somebody in three years, and they're like, hey, I know you. Uh, somebody from the shelter, somebody that comes out of jail. And we're down here. They can see the faithfulness of God because we just show up. We don't have to say anything. I don't have to be on the microphone. We just show up, and, and that gives people hope. Do we realize that? When you show up at, from the homeless shelter, where's Marcus? Where's Marcus? Marcus is back Marcus there. Marcus is an example. I mean, right I've been there. seeing Marcus show up for months, over a year, probably going into his second year. But when I see him, that brings me hope. When we see each other, Big D, that brings me hope. When we see one another. So we need to show up for one another. But let's talk about the tithe. Malachi 3, 9 through 11 says, Ye are cursed with a curse because you've robbed me. This is God speaking. Even this whole nation. Bring ye the tithe to the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me. This is the one time in scripture where God says, Try me. Test me. Prove me. Bring a tenth. And he says, Try me. He says, Test me. Well, what, is the, what, is, what are you testing God with when you bring the tenth? See if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pull out a blessing that there's not room enough to receive it. And, and then what? Man, there's so much I can say about this, guys. I, I want to stop for a minute. Seven years ago, in two days, and I can show you after the service if you want to see, I'll show you my mug shot. There was a guy in uh, St. Clair Shores, Michigan, the guy was me, strung out on drugs. The police surrounded my property. I'll show, you the, I'll show you the news reports if you want to see it. So I can pull up on the phone stuff. I checked today. They, they responded to a call that there was a man in the, with a hostage and a pistol inside this home in St. Clair Shores. They had me surrounded seven years ago. I was strung out on crack cocaine. I was strung out on heroin. And I was surrounded by the police. Listen to me. This is where I was at seven years ago in two days. Two days from now, seven years ago, I can show you the, the news report. That's where my life was. I was a man running from God, pursuing sin and all the things this world has to offer, and I ended up in a standoff with the police. So this is where my journey started with all of what we're talking about right now. In order to even get out of jail, I had to sign over to the bails people, uh, my, my, you know how you got to give them the title of the house or something. Well, they won't get you out. And if you mess up, guess they what? Don't. They take your house. Yeah. You understand? This is where I was at seven years ago. I want you to hear me. Crack cocaine and heroin. Not everything is what it appears when we look at people. We look at people, it's natural to size each other up and look each other up and not one another. But this was my reality. Now, I didn't have a hostage. But I realized I was the hostage. Because sin has a consequence to it, guys. Sin is fun. Listen to me. I enjoyed getting high. I enjoyed gambling. I enjoyed fighting. I did. Committing crime, getting away with it. There was a high to that. But it all came to a crashing halt, man. It's like, man, my life was just... I don't get one penny. Not one penny. Come to me. I don't get as a matter of fact, we took on a role, my wife and I, some of you don't know this, but we were asked to come on staff as pastors at my local church where we've been faithfully serving for the last seven years. And we're uh, on the pastoral and I don't talk about that because that's not important. It's not, I don't need to, you don't need to call me pastor, call me Brother Joe, I'm okay with that. But, 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 but my point is, they said, well, we can't afford to pay you. And I said, I don't want to be paid. Now, now listen, that's not everybody's story. How many know that, that people that are in ministry, and I must say it, and I wasn't asked to say this, but Pastor Steve and Jeremiah have families. Now, how do they support them? They don't have jobs. 
Do you understand that? They don't have jobs. They didn't ask me to say this. I'm saying it. Because I've watched these men of God. They, they're not down on Shane Street for the money. And anybody, even, I hope people are watching this live. They're not here for the money. Do you understand that? They're not money here to be made. Do you understand that? You're not getting rich down here. If you're going to get money in ministry, it's down on Shane Street. What does that tell you? They're here for the people. Amen. Who are the people? You and me. Amen. That's what they're here for. But listen, they got they got families that have to pay their bills. Now, where does the income come from? The ministry. It's okay for ministers to make money through the ministry, correct? Yeah. We're jaded because of the big money grabbers that we see on TV. Mm -hmm. Give me your money. God wants to bless you. You know, driving around in their expensive cars and everything else, and we get jaded. We don't we don't want to hear about money because because of these preachers that are money grabbing, taking two and three offerings and, and fleecing or taking advantage of God's people. But but you gotta know and you gotta know God and their ministries like peacemakers that this is what I call good soil. They're not begging for your money. And you say, Well, I ain't got any money. It's just got a dime. God can increase that. Yeah. God can take a dime and a dime here and a 10 cents there and 20 cents there and 30 cents there and it adds up. And wow, over 20 years later, this ministry is still going. How, how's it going? Just God. These men are not in it for the money, but how many know that through our tithing, through our giving as we're able to, God blesses the ministers of the gospel. And they should make money. But I'm going to show you that. So it's an act of worship, guys. It's an act of obedience. God says, bring it. Oh, by the way, let me go back here. I, I, I was getting to this point. He says, bring the tenth. Don't rob me. Bring a tenth. God says, don't rob me and test me and see what I do. He says, I'll pour, I'll open the windows of heaven. Can you imagine God just opening? How many need God to open up the windows on your life? Some of you ain't got it, maybe. It might be finances, it might be peace that you need, it might be love in your life, it might need some hope. You need God to pour it out on you. You need him to open up the, the portals of heaven and pour it out on you. I was there seven years ago. My spirit was broken. I was sad. I was ashamed. I was guilty. I needed God to pour it out on my life. What did he promise to do in verse 11? Not only will he pour it out, listen to what he'll do. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Who is the devourer? Anybody the know? devil. He better eat your lunch. He better, he better destroy my life. I gave up my freedom. I gave up my relationship. I gave up my peace of mind. I gave up a relationship with people I loved and cared about. I gave up a relationship with my, my, my child, my parents. Because that came first. Giving my life over to sin came first. But if I'll honor God with the tenth, he says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall he, shall your vine cast, uh, neither shall your vine cast your fruit before the time in the field, thus saith the Lord. He says, I will rebuke the devourer for you. People want to argue, eh, that's old testament. That, do what you want to do. I'm gonna give you my testament. You do what you want to do with this, and you listen to who you want to listen to. But I'm gonna listen to the whole council, I'm gonna listen to everything that God says. Listen to me. Do you know who God is? For God so loved the world that he gave. He get, he's a giver. The very fact that we can come into relationship is because he gave his very best for us. He gave his son. So that we might come back into relationship with him. He, he is a giver. God gives freely. He, it's, freely God gives. That's who he is. And that's who we want to be if we want to be like him. 1 Corinthians 9, 14. Even so hath the Lord ordained that... Listen to me. I have a business. God has blessed me with a, a business. So financially, I'm stable because I have a business. So I can say to the ministry, I don't want your offering. Yes. I don't need to come preach and you take up a love offering for me. Because God has supplied my needs a different way. But not every ministry can say that. So we need to recognize that ministries that we go and get fed at, mm -hmm. 
We get fed spiritually, right? Sometimes, like ministry like this place, we get fed spiritually, we get fed literally, we get clothed, we get loved on. Praise God for ministries like this. We need to give as we're able to. We need to give with a willing heart, a giving heart. Well, Brother Joel, I only get $200 a month. Give $20. Amen. Listen to me. 10% of the gross. Test God. Test God. I did that. I'm telling you I did that. Straight out of jail. All that time. I was looking at all face and all that time. I was looking at a lot of time. You can't just be in a standoff with the police for 10 hours in St. Clair Shores, Michigan. And like, yeah, you're cool. You understand that? <laughs> Along with the other charges, assault and battery, and all the other charges that I could show you on my record that were happening all at that time. Fleeing a lewd. You can't run from the police. I don't pull over. I say, listen, I'm dirty. So if you're riding with me, I'm just going to let you know. I'm not pulling over. If they get behind me, we're going. Okay. And believe me, I can show you the record. That's the way that I lived. And I'm not bragging on my sin. I'm just letting you know where I was at when God found me. He found me. Listen to me. He found me and got my attention. And so it was my honor to be able to give him a tenth. At the house where I... So where do I give my tenth? Well, I think I should give my tenth at the house where I'm fed at. Where I'm spiritually fed at. So my local church... Gets a tenth. But guess what? Peacemakers at times has got a tenth of my income. And other times, Peacemakers has got an offering where I just say, here, Lord, this is to bless this ministry, to help further this ministry. Because, because these are the places I go to get fed. I was really up in the game when a, a lot of places were closing down during the pandemic. This place continued on. That's not to knock anyone. Listen to me. Preachers have to leave. You know, we need to shut it down and go, you know, internet. That's fine if that's the way that, that, you know, we need to do it this way. We need to do it that way. Each man needs to lead the congregation as he left. But I was coming here, so I felt like sowing here was very important. Wow. It's very important because uh, these lights here, they don't just come on. They don't just, right, or do they? I mean, I don't know. Do these just come on? Do they just, does the city just say, oh, you're a church, I'm going to go ahead and turn them on for you? Or do they require us to pay a bill? The heat in here feels pretty warm. That requires, and I was thinking about this, Pastor Steve. I have no idea. Like, I stay out of everybody's business. I just come here. I, I, I don't know the ins and outs. I don't know what they make. And I know they're not getting rich. And I was just wondering tonight, I'm like, man, I wonder how much it costs to have the lights on in this place. Oh, well, yeah, a lot. And the heat on all day long. A lot. Right? Oh, she, I don't know. I, honest, she's got some 600 a month. I don't know. It has to be a lot, though, because we all are housed here, and the Jesus house are going through here all day long. And, and, and Bible studies and all the things that go on in these buildings, it costs money. So, 1 Timothy 5.17 says, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the world, in the word, I'm sorry, in the word and doctrine. Those, that means the ones that preach the gospel. For the scripture says, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treads out the corn, and the labor is worthy of his reward. Amen. I'm not afraid to talk about giving. Because I, I don't benefit personally, financially from the gospel. Because God has provided a different way for me. Through business. He told me, through business, that I will give you a vision. That's me and my wife and our family. And I'll give you the provision for the vision. And he told me that I'll never have to go to God's people and say, hey, could you take up a love offering? Could you help support me financially monthly? Could you? That was the path that he gave us. But that's not everybody's path. Yeah. Sometimes people's path is they need the income from the local body. And the ministers I know that are laboring in the gospel, really preaching this gospel, loving people the way that we're supposed to be loving people, they're not getting rich, man. Yeah. They're not getting rich. They're not getting rich. I believe they're believing God sometimes to pay the bills. Matter of fact, I know that. Amen. Just believing that they can pay their own bills. So they're worthy of double honor, the Bible says. 
And that comes for you and I being obedient to the gospel, being obedient to scripture, giving a tenth. That's how that happens, through the tenth. Luke 6 says, give it, it shall be given to you. Now listen, this is New Testament now. This is New Testament. This is what God says. You give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, Amen. shall men give into your bosom, for with the same measure that you meet, it shall be measured back to you again. Well, that doesn't save money. Well, get what you want to give yourself. Give your time. Well, I'm going to give my money. I'm going to give you finances. Not because I'm making a deal with God. Well, you know, you, I'm going to give, now you owe me. No, it ain't, it ain't like that with God. He gives. He's a giver. He gave his best. How much better can you give than yourself that we might have eternal? He's a giver. So when we get to know him, we want to give. So, so when we give, my wife and I, my girls are in the car, and I have the envelope, and we're on our way to the service, I understand that giving is obedience. So I said, God, I'm bringing back a tenth. I thank you for what you've done for my family. And I'm going to bring back a tenth and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for rebuking the devourer off of me. I had a lot of charges to face. And as I tithe, those things begin to lighten up and things begin to fall off. And I was able to get through these probation periods and these court cases one after the next, after the next, after the next. And I saw God in my own life rebuke the devourer. Push back. The penalty. See, he could have done anything. And I went into these court cases saying, God, whatever you want to do, I just want to serve you. But in the meantime, I won't be obedient in my tithe and my offerings and missions. Because how many know missionaries got to go across seas and give the gospel? Amen. And they don't do that free. We've got to give them money. Uh, we, don't, we don't have to do anything. We can hold on to it if we want to. But I wanted to give, and I saw that God blessed and pushed back the devour in our lives. And, 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 and I was able to sail through them situations. It was very, and there was times, guys, going through these legal cases where I woke up overwhelmed so much I was in tears what, coming out of my sleep. I was under a lot of pressure because the things that I, the crimes that I committed, the things I had done, I was facing the consequences for. And it was, wasn't fun. It was painful. And it was uh, scary. And I didn't know what was going to happen in my life. But, but God saw me through that, and, he, and I saw him rebuke the devourer, push back the enemy on my life. And he'll do the same for you because he promises to. Amen. Just a couple more scriptures and I'm done. New Testament. When God has your heart, he will have your wallet too. It's, it, it's just something about we don't want to sometimes come out of our money. Because we have reasons like we got other things to do with it and we can't afford it. I say you can't afford not to give. You can do what you want to do, but I'm telling you, you can't afford not to give. So these people draw on me with their mouth, on me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines and commandments of men. So it's a heart posture. Giving is a heart posture. Giving is what God uh, requires of us is God what, what he demonstrates to us. Giving is what he does. And, and the way I look at it like this, it, it, guys, whatever he gives us, whether it's time or talents or abilities or finance, hold it or, or even your family or your job or your vehicle, just picture God putting it in your hand and never, ever close your hand up. Mm -hmm. Never close your hand up. Hold it like this. And if he says hang on to it, then go ahead and hang on to it. But if he says to give it, then give it. Yeah. Let it go. Because it all belongs to him. Amen. It's all his. He just allows us to steward it. Like he allows me to steward a family and steward uh, my life and steward a job and finances. He allows me to do that. It's the same way he allows you to do that. And here's the thing. He's, he, he, it's, God's so gracious. He's asking us for a tenth of a hundred. How much, how much does that leave us with? Ninety percent. 90%. In 2 Corinthians it says, He that sows sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. So the way that we give is the way that God gives. Can I, can, I, can I just say this? That first year going through those, and I say this for testimony reason only. I'm not going to say figures, but I'm just going to tell it to you this way. 
and you do what you want to do. This is my testimony, and I'm going to just share it with you. And, I, and sometimes you, you feel, to be honest, the enemy doesn't want you to share this because you're talking to people that might not be in the same financial position. So you, the devil wants to say, well, you sound like you're bragging. Or you're acting like you're better than. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to shame the devil, and I'm going to honor God. And I'm going to share it. Yeah. Because I came from a broken place, and I know a lot of us are broken right now. So that's the place that I started from. And I just want to tell you this. So that first year in business, the tent came forward, okay? So I made that first year in business coming out of jail. I sold my vehicle that the police had impounded Ooh. illegally, by the way. That was not that was a legal, that illegal uh, seizure on my vehicle. When I got the vehicle back, they said, sign this paper that you won't sue us. Huh. Literally. This is a true wow. story. But I needed the vehicle back because I had no money. And I wanted to start a business. So I took the vehicle, I, I bought it back, $5,000. And I sold the vehicle, and then I took the money and I started a company. It's Cornerstone Custom Brick, that's still going today. That first year, I sold 10%. On the gross of my income, that first year, seven years ago. You know what's amazing? God blessed, and he blessed. Didn't he say he would pour out a blessing that I couldn't contain? Mm -hmm. Listen to me and hear what I'm saying here. So what I made gross, or what I made gross, the total I made the first year, hear what I'm saying. So think about your income for a whole year. A whole year. A whole year income. I gave 10% on it, right? I just got... And I'm not going to give you figures, but I'm going to say it this way. Because I want to show I want you to hear this. I tried and tested God. Our tithe this year, seven years later, our tithe, our tenth, was greater than my first year's total gross income. Can you hear, did you hear what I said? What I gave God this year was greater than my whole income, the whole year gross income, my first year. Did he say 36, 30, 60, 100 fold? Did God say he'd pour out a blessing financially? Did he say that? Is he God? Is he a man that he'll lie or he won't lie? <laughs> so that's, that's the testimony. God is a giver. If we will give, he will give. Amen. It's amazing to me. I didn't even know where we're at through my answer, but that's what God did. So I just want to challenge you that wherever you're at, try God. Test Him. Be men and women that give. Be men and women that help the, the work of God go forward. Be men of God that see other men and women of God be able to support their families. And if you ain't got it, don't give it. God, in the last scripture, God loves a cheerful giver. Mm -hmm. Well, give it with a willing heart. Give it with a loving heart. Uh, be ready to give and, and see what God will do. He'll, he'll pour out a blessing, I promise you. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah, so pray over the altar. Yeah, so Lord, we just thank you for tonight. We thank you for your word. And Lord, I, I just thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. And I thank you for the faithfulness in the life of those that are here in this room. And, can understand what I'm testifying. And I thank you, Lord, for the testimony that's going to come forth out of this room for those that haven't experienced your goodness that way but are going to experience your goodness from this day forward. I just pray that somebody will take you up on your word and they'll test you, God, tonight and begin to test you with the tenth of their increase, Lord, as an act of worship to you, an act of obedience to you, knowing that you're true to your word, God, and that you not only own the cattle on a thousand hills, God, but you own the hills, too. God, you'll never disappoint. I pray that that got in, into somebody's spirit tonight, Lord. I pray that that changed somebody's life in the name of Jesus. As we give, Lord, I pray that you increase yeah. like you did with the, the loaves and fishes, how you increase it, God. I pray that you'll do that for the ministry of peace. Keep the lights in the name of Jesus.
Joel's saying, I come from like the same thing. I was a heroin addict, all that. I went through a uh, program called Team Challenge. Dude, when I first started graduating and I worked from uh, from there, I made like $50 like a month. And I gave that $5, you know, that 10%. Dude, 10 years later, like no figures, nothing like that, but I'm a semi-truck driver right now. Trust me, I make a lot more than $50 a month now. You know what I mean? Like, I 100% I agree with what this man's saying. It ain't just him. God's done it in my life. He does it all the time. So, like he said, if you got a dollar, give that 10 cents. Like, put God to the test. He's going to bless you. Praise Amen. God. We got an emergency about the hold. We need to pray for the guy that donated the baked goods, Dylan. We heard he was just taking the hospital and he's unresponsive. His son just walked in the door. Very interesting that all this is going on. So we need to pray for him. That's a priority. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we break the power of the spirit of death over Dylan right now in the name of Jesus Satan you loose him and let him go yes, in the God. name of the Lord Jesus yes. Christ of Nazareth we speak life and not death we declare he will live and not yes. die and declare the works of the Lord in Jesus yes. name and father we will not tolerate the insubordination of the devil in the name of Jesus you spirit of death you are loose from him in Jesus name and father do what you gotta do supernaturally yes. and medically to bring him around, bring him back, restore him in the name of Jesus. Yes. We thank you, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. You rose from the dead, mm -hmm. and you come to give us life, and life more abundant. Yes. He's a young man, Lord, and he's promised seven years, three score and ten, and we're believing for at least that in his life in Jesus' name. Yes. We thank you, Father, for having mercy on him. Thank you for bringing his son down in the name yes. of Jesus. In the yes. name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your mighty name, oh God. Praise your mighty name. You know, Dylan's a really good guy. He's worked behind the scenes here for years, like a lot of people. A lot of people don't know what a lot of people have done here. A lot of people. And he's just one of those guys that's put in a lot of labor, a lot of love in the ministry. And uh, <laughs> highly skilled as a carpenter. Uh, you know, but he's been hit a lot with uh, Crohn's disease and that kind of stuff through the years. He's had his inside just destroyed. He's had a ton of stuff, tons of operations through the years. He's struggled. You know, we don't always know what each other struggles with, right? But he's struggled a lot. So uh, we just believe in God to get him through this present uh, momentary light affliction. And it says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are unseen, for the things that are seen, the craziness, is uh, temporary, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Father, for life. Amen. The life of God. The Zoe. To enter him in the yes. name of Jesus Christ. You said you shall decree a thing, and it shall be established to you. And it's your word. Not our word. Your word. In Jesus' name. Thank you that you confirm your word, Lord, with signs followed. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. He'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Mark, it's been such a pleasure to have you guys back down again. And I was going to share a little bit about just testifying. Because of, because of time, I don't want to uh, read a lot, but I've shared the story about Saul, the disciple. He was a, a young man that was a, a religious zealot, a Jew. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He, he hated the fact that there were Christians around. And he spent his time uh, throwing men, women, and children in prison. And he'd even consent or be happy about their death. He hated Christians. 
when Stephen was stoned in the scriptures in the book of Acts, it says that he was uh, he was there, and uh, the scripture says he was consent was being killed in the name of the Lord. He gleefully did that. And then there was a day where he went to uh, uh, Jerusalem, and he desired uh, letters to go to Damascus, that if he found any of this way, which is the Christian way, when he got to Damascus, he would bring them back, Scripture says hailing them, and bringing them back like in chains, and he's going to bring them back to Jerusalem to have them locked up and, and possibly killed or whatever. He hated Christians. It says as he took those letters to Damascus, he had a crew of men, and all of a sudden as he was going to Damascus, there appeared a light above the brightness of the noonday sun. And it shone and it literally knocked all the men, him and whoever was with him, and knocked them all to the ground. Now this light was above the brightness of the noonday sun, and it slammed them to the ground. And all of a sudden a voice came out of that light and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He was so freaked out, and believe me, the Bible says when he was explaining this testimony, uh, it says, and he trembling and astonished said, who are you, Lord? So it wasn't like, oh, who are you, Lord? He was totally freaked out, cut to the chase, blowing his mind. All of a sudden, he shelved everything that he knew about God, according to the law, and growing up as a religious Pharisee, and he realized he encountered something that was way beyond him, and it had his undivided attention. Everybody say undivided attention. undivided attention. And it threw him to the ground. And a voice came out of that light and said, and, and, and he said, Saul, Saul, why do you, why do you persecute me? And here's what his, what his response was. Who are you, Lord? And I can imagine, it says he trembling and astounded. Who, who are you, Lord? And probably 20 times louder than that. Freaked out and it said, I am Jesus. Three words. I'm Jesus, whom you're persecuting. And it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. In other words, you're bucking what I'm doing, and you're on the wrong wrong team. You're playing on the wrong team. Because guess what? I'm Jesus, and I did rise of the dead. Boy, I'm talking to you now. He got his undivided attention. He was so freaked out after he said, uh, you know, and then he said, well, Lord, what would you have me to do? And the thing about it, when you read the scriptures, the whole rest of the New Testament, so many letters he wrote in precarious situations, being shipwrecked, stoned, left for dead, uh, in prison, he's never abandoned the faith. He kept the faith. In fact, at the end of his life, he said how he kept the faith. And because of that, there's laid up for him a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give it that day. And not to him only, but unto all them also, quote, that love his appearance. You love the appearing of Jesus, or are you scared that Jesus will come back? If you're scared, there's something not right in your life. Be ye ready, the Bible says, when such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man comes. So he followed the Lord, and God used him in a mighty way. Now, what I was going to do is read, but I haven't got time, so I'll just sort of quote what happened. And that, that was Acts chapter uh, 9, where the Lord, which recorded where the Lord appeared to him and all that happened. In Acts chapter 22 and in Acts chapter 26 or 7, there are two recordings where he was dragged on the carpet to give a testimony of what happened to him. One was before King Agrippa. And it says that he told King Agrippa what had happened. And King Agrippa was a Jew, and he knew the law, he knew about God, he knew what the prophets had written, that there's a come Messiah, and he challenged the king. And he told him, you know these things. You know these things. And I, I'm a testimony of the fact that I encountered Jesus. And that this is real and all that. And it goes on to say, I, I wish I'd read the whole thing, but it goes on to say, you know, King Agrippa at one point said, Paul, you're mad. You're beside yourself. You're crazy, man. You're talking like a lunatic. I mean, you've been on our side. Now you're on the Christian side. And now, now you're, you're, you're on their side. And you were always a good old boy, man. You were submissive. You did everything we wanted you to do. And now you're, you're like a traitor. You're crazy. You're beside yourself. He said, I'm not beside myself. King Griffin, you know this stuff. You know the scriptures. And he wanted him to let him know that this thing's real. He wasn't just blowing smoke. He didn't have some religious experience. It was real. And it goes on to say that King Agrippa said, Almost, almost, you persuade me to be a Christian. So the key is what? He had an opportunity to witness, and he opened his mouth, and was used by God to share his testimony. 
to share the gospel in a very precarious situation where he could have got killed for it. But he knew God and God was greater and he was going to follow God no matter what the devil and his grandma said or what the council said, what the Jewish leader said. He was going to follow God right to the death. Why? Because he had a real encounter with God when he got saved. Some people need to have an encounter with Jesus. Coming to church will not save you. If God don't get you by the scruff of the neck, so to speak, at some point and shake you and let you know, this is real. God, forgive me. I'm a sinner. I need you. If you haven't had some kind of thing like that, there's a good chance you need to get saved. Because if you get saved, your life is going to change. You'll do more than come to church, more than just eat the food. This, that, the, you, you'll, you'll come in and you'll go out and little by little, line upon line, precept upon precept. You'll start changing more and more into the image of Jesus. So if you come in the church for 10, 20 years and there's no change, but you like the hugs from Pastor Steve, like you said, or you like the high fives, or you like a ham sandwich or some chicken wings, you know, and that's good, man. They feed me, they feed me. But you're never paying attention to what we're here for, to win your soul to Jesus and make you a disciple so you'll go out and tell others. We're not here to just get people saved. And I thought about that. I thought about how many people have I personally been used to influence in a lot of ways for good, but how many really take this out beyond the four walls? As much as I preach, share, try to show them and demonstrate, hey, this is part and parcel of the gospel. We need to share this with others, sharing your faith, testifying about Jesus. And I'll tell you, I wouldn't ask for hands, but I know there's a lot of people have never, and they might have been saved 20 years or more, never talked about Jesus when they know God supposedly. And my question is, what's wrong with that picture? That is so opposite to the gospel and to the challenge of the gospel and the call of God and what we're called to do. Acts 1.8 says, you shall receive power Dunamis, mighty, miraculous work, but after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you'll be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and under the uttermost parts of the earth. In other words, once you get filled, you're going to go and start telling people. Because there's a spirit in you that just has to tell people. And my question is for real. If you say you're saved and there's none of that in you, no desire to tell it, my question is, are you saved? Are you saved? Is there any fruit in your life? The Bible says a tree is no much fruit. There's going to be something happening. I love the Lord. I, you know, something's different. All right, Especially you come to church for 5, 10, 20 years. I'm telling you, a lot of people are playing religious church even in Pentecostal or Baptist circles where they're preaching the Word. Your job is not to get fat on the Word and become religiously educated, intellectually articulate. Know God in the Bible. And then when you go out, well, I'm just a non-let-your-light-shine person. <laughs> Jesus told everybody, let your light shine. So the question is, are we letting it shine? I was in Costco yesterday, and I, honestly, I don't share 97% of my experiences, or 98, very little do I share what I do day to day. I was in uh, Costco yesterday shopping, say shopping. But when I go shopping or go out at all, I got more on my mind than what I'm planning on doing in the next, always. Because when I look at people, I'm always thinking, are they saved or are they not? Heaven and hell, they're not saved, man. I'm obsessed with that. Because I, I guess it's because in my situation, the way God came on me was very much like Saul. God came out of left field. He got my undivided attention and scared me half to death. He showed me this thing was real. And I am totally driven to this day, 47 years by it. So that shaped my mindset. But the thing is, I've been preaching the word for years and years and years. And how many people around me really, at least, I know people have grown in the Lord now, but how many people have carried it out? And it was really bothering me. So in Costco yesterday, I was in denial looking at, oh, I was looking at chairs. I looked at those chairs, Jeremiah, if you're still in here. And, uh, yeah, we're looking to change these chairs for certain reasons. So I got some chairs out, and I was checking this one out to Jared scene, sitting in it. All of a sudden, one of the workers come up. He's right across the aisle, you know. He's there. Well, I'm sitting in the chair thinking about it. Look at this guy I go, man. I'm going to, I'm going to, well, whatever, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit him. And that's just the way I am. So I started up the conversation. Hey, bro, how you doing, man? All right. You ever give your heart to Jesus, man? What? I said, have you ever given your heart to Jesus? I, I never heard of that. You never heard of it? And he, he was another one I run, that never heard the gospel. 
I'm talking he was in his mid-twenties. I run to people 30, 40s, 50s that have never heard the gospel. Here's what irritates me. I was one of them people. 25 in Extroberg, you've heard this. All over the planet, knew hundreds and hundreds of people throughout my life. Not one time was anybody ever a witness to me for Jesus. Wow. Nobody ever came to me and said the gospel or told me about it. Not one ever. And I was destined for hell in a handbasket in my sins. The devil is just waiting to kill me in my sins, and he almost did it many times. But by the grace of God and people's prayers, God allowed me to have a, a Saul-type experience. That was the mercy of God. But did he do that just for me to go to church? No. He did that to get a hold of me. So you could and, like, else. and like Saul, you know, he started churches and provoked people and raised them up and sent them out, man. And they were going and blazing trails. And my question is, my God, if I need to go somewhere else, <laughs> I've been to Africa, I've been to, I've been to different places, Haiti a lot of times. And there's a lot of response. Do I need to go somewhere else where people are really going to get this and take it? Because if we're not taking it, we're wasting it. I call it we're wasting God in us. God, the creator of the universe, that has the potential to do anything. Because he is he's God. Through you, not just to you, but through you. Especially you've been getting the word. If the seed of the word's in you, believe me, it was given to you to give away. <laughs> He said, follow me, I'll, I'll make you a fisherman if you follow me. He didn't say if you go to church, you'll be a fisherman if you follow me. So how many of us want to hear what the Spirit said? Like in Revelation, see that has ears to hear? Hear what the Spirit said to the churches. Multitudes of people out here, folks, not saved. I had a great conversation with this guy. He took all the time. We were probably 15, 20 minutes in the aisle. He wasn't all in a hurry, but God really had a lot of it. It was a great time. And then as I was leaving... A couple other things that happened there, but as I was leaving, every vet, you know, a lot of guys will wear hats, but I'm a, I'm a Vietnam vet or Korean vet or World War II vet or whatever. They're pretty rare, but they're out there. So as I was walking out of the, ch out of the church, yeah, it was church, Costco's church. <laughs> Tell it like it is. Come out, bro. Come out. Church is where with Jesus is. Where. There you go. So as I'm walking away, you know, they got a little, like, hot dog stand there. Like a dollar fifty for a big hot dog. And whatever. I didn't get one, but somebody was eating one. He was a real old guy, and he had a hat on that said Korea. And I knew this guy was in his 80s. Had to be. The Korean War was around 1950 to 53, 4, something like that. Yep. A lot of people don't know, but that's called the Forgotten War. It was horrible. I mean, the Chinese got involved. Korean, it was unbelievable. It was a bloodbath. It was like a takeoff after World War II. Yep. So, I went over to him and I said, hey, bro, hey, brother, whatever. And he looked at me and I go, I, I always stare back and go, you're a vet, you're going to get a hug whether you like it or not. That, that's just, it comes out of my heart and nobody's ever resisted. Well, one Marine did, lately. He was a tall brother <laughs> working in a water store. He's probably about six, seven, brand new guy. And uh, it's funny because just the way he carried himself, I said, you've been in the military, haven't you? He goes, how'd you know? I go, just your countenance. I just, I perceive you've been in the military. Yeah, I was in the Marine Corps. And I said, well, I'd like to give every bit a hug. And he was, <laughs> I think coronavirus got to him before I did. But he was, he was fearful. And that's all, that one did, that's probably one of the only ones that I can remember. But here's what happened to Korean vet. And uh, so I went over and, you know, gave him a hug. And yeah, I need to get home and all, but you know what? I don't want this guy to get away from me. World War II, Korean, they're rare as a bird. There's <laughs> barely any left. I want to talk to this guy, and if he wants to kick it, I'm going to stay here as long as he wants. We'll just kick it. So we hung out for probably a good half hour. And he told me a couple things. And uh, one I'll give you, I was hoping Kenny and Noah were here tonight because they could relate. They were in the, in the which, which is the, I don't want to blow the story. So here this guy, when he was in Korea, he, he was over there in 50 to 53 or 4. And he was with the Air, what well, wasn't, it was the Air Corps, I believe, before the Air Force. And it became the Air Force in the early 50s, I think. Mm -hmm. So he was uh, one of them. And they land in Korea, and it was treacherously cold, freezing. They get out of the plane, there's a tent over there. And uh, he goes in the tent to get one of his pot belly stove. Anybody know what a pot belly stove yeah. is? 
Well, I'll tell you, just like you told me, pardon that, it's not cussing because it's real. Some people made a cuss. Do you want to hear like you told me? Yeah. Oh, we got a lady here. <laughs> anyway, he said, I went in there, and there was a pot belly stove. So he went up, and uh, I'll modify it. And he said, I, I backed up, and I put my butt, hello, okay. up against the pot belly stove to get warm. It was freezing. And he said there was a guy on the other side that he had his butt on the other side. Oh, okay. You know, he's back to me. And he said, I tried to start a conversation with this guy. <laughs> he wouldn't talk. So whatever, you know, he's thinking the guy's probably just tripping. So after a while he leaves, and there's some of his friends over there, and they said, I'm so, did you get Ted Williams' attention? He goes, what? He goes, that was Ted Williams, the baseball player. The famous Hall of Famer baseball player. He was, he was a fighter pilot. And he's over. And one of the reasons he didn't talk, I guess at that time he was having some issues being in the service with her. But he was in for a long day. He was in World War II. And then he re-upped and he was in the Korean War. So he, he was butt to butt <laughs> with Ted Williams. I'll tell you what, you'll never hear that story from anybody else. I doubt if anybody's ever been that close to Ted Williams. Probably most of the younger people don't even know who he is. Has anybody heard of Ted Williams? But I know Kenny, but I know because they're baseball players. But I thought that was so cool. I said, this guy, he's going he's gonna to be 90 in a few months. So he, he could be out of here at any time. And I did talk to him, and he knew Jesus. So we had some prayer and encouragement in that. But he, he knew the Lord. And uh, But the thing is, a, a guy like that, you won't hear that story from anybody on the planet. You heard it first on Shane. Give God a hand. But the but with Tim Williams. All you baseball players <laughs> So that was good. But the thing is, people people want to engage. And anybody that knows Christ, first of all, it's not you, it's Christ in you. And it's a Holy Spirit that's like the honey that attracts the bees. It's like the light that attracts the moths. But if you don't let your light shine by being or learning to be extroverted, the light is retained and nobody knows what you got in you. And I always see this. That will let you learn all the word you want. But if you never somehow in your life, and not to be clones of somebody, but learn to obey the Holy Spirit and do whatever he's telling you to do as far as other people, because people are what this is all about. I don't know if you know that. It's about people like, Joseph, that's why we're down here. We ain't here for the money. We're here for the people. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? So we love people. We want to see them come to Jesus. Amen. We want to see them have their sins forgiven. We know how to get people there. As long as they'll come and listen and respond, they can get saved. No matter how mean and ugly they are, I don't care if they're a serial, serial killer, rapist, or anything else, or, or whatever, they can be saved. Amen. That's the message of the gospel, the good news. Jesus said, I came that all men might be saved and come to knowledge of the truth. But with all the people I encounter and all the response I get of people say, I never heard that stuff, all kinds of it blows me away to this day. I think in 1974 when I got saved and I never heard, I think between 1974 with all the Christians that are being multiplied, all the churches around, all the Holy Ghost moving on, everybody would have heard the gospel over and over and over again and be swamping it. But I don't see it. I think we dropped the ball, man. We are putting first things first. Soul winning is God's number one job. He that winneth souls is wise. And here's the thing, folks. I know we have, I know the reasons why. I know all that. I know people, I know why. Fears and everything else. You can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens you. The Lord is the strength of your life. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. God said, I'll give you a mouth and wisdom that all your enemies or adversaries will not be able to gain, say, and resist. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 6, verse 10. He'll give you a mouth and wisdom. Book of Jeremiah said, I'll put my words in your mouth. They're in there. But if you say, oh, I can't, I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't, the devil's going to do They got all that God in them, and I'm keeping them down. Because if anybody hears what you have to say, God can ignite that and cause it to be light and life and possibly eternal life to somebody else. And they can be rescued from the devil's hell. All of you learn to obey God. And when he says, talk to that person. You don't have to come right up and hit them over the head with a Bible. That don't work. Just be cordial. Hey, how you doing? Need any prayer? There's a lot of ways to come up, people. God can tell you. But I'm telling you, it's time, folks. 
to get the gospel out. And if we're not raising people up to go out, what the heck are we doing? Well, we're having a pretty good time. We'll get some people delivered and saved right here. <laughs> in the book of Acts, that isn't the way the church was. People were getting saved and they were going out. They were lighting trails. They got persecuted. They multiplied more. They preached the gospel more. They didn't fear for their own lives. We're scared to die. We're scared to talk. We're scared to this. Shut up, Mr. Devil, in Jesus' name. You've got to get to the point where you're sick and tired of the devil trick bagging your brain and keeping you locked in and keeping Christ in you locked in. Christ came in you like not just to save you, but to promote himself to others through you. So we got to grow up, folks. We've got to grow up. Quit being children. Amen. Let's get ruthless about this yeah. and realize the devil's been tricking us. All of us have the ability in Christ the Bible says, if any man minister, let him minister as of the ability that God gives. That God, in all things, may be glorified. It's not Pastor Steve doing this. It's the Holy Spirit who just has to fly out of me. It's just the way it is. Only because I allow him. Or I cannot allow him. I can say, I don't think so. I don't know. That guy's too mean and ugly. I got hundreds of testimonies that will blow your mind. But you've got to step out of the boat. If anybody's going to get saved or plant some seed in their life, you have to be a willing vessel. More than just going to church. I'll tell you, I'm getting tired of preaching. Last couple of years, I feel God saying, because I can preach, I can preach the word, have you know, but if it's not producing extroverts, what good is it? God's wanting me to wind down and preach and talk to the people more. Provoke them, teach them, man. Provoke them to get moving, coming together, loving one another, forgiving one another, and moving and doing whatever God's telling them. I've been preaching for 47 years, folks, and I can go preach anywhere. Most people won't love me in the church because they don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to say because I don't go there canned and whatever. So <laughs> I guess to a lot of people I'm dangerous. I don't know why. I'm trying to be a nice guy and help them. <laughs> Maybe get the pastor saved. I don't know. But the bottom line is, folks, we're the church of the living God. We're the light of the world. We have the answers that the people need to go to heaven and miss hell. Man, I think we all need a trip to hell for just five seconds. If we can literally go to hell for five seconds, I guarantee you change. Guarantee you. You have a totally different mindset when you look at people. There's nothing wrong with having a hell experience. God has let me feel what it's like to be there a number of times, and it ain't no joke. You are in a place where you know you're in eternity, you know you've blown it, and you know you're locked up. There's no words to describe the fear and the craziness, and it'll never stop. Hell, lake of fire, all, it's, it's not a joke. The Bible is true. Every word of God is true. So let's take it to another level. Say, Lord, I want to be a soul winner. I want to be a fisherman. You said if I follow you, I'll be a fisherman. I want to sign on that, Lord. I want to sign that document. I want to, I want to join your army. Uh, come to attention in Jesus' name. And learn to obey you because the world is dying out here and going to hell in the handbags. That's right. With all the Christians over since the 60s, since revival was hitting in the 70s, 50s, 60s, 70s, there should be people out here sick and tired of hearing that aren't saved yet. Over and over and over because all these... But you know what? Seems to me people that are even trying to talk about God are a rare bird. Do you ever hear what a dodo bird is? Do you ever hear of a dodo bird? They're, I think they're extinct. But you know what a mugwump is? Mugwump bump? A mugwump? You never heard of a mugwump? Well, you picture a log, a big log in a swamp. You picture like a dodo bird, a funny looking old jack of a bird sitting on that. He's got his mug on one side of the log and his wump on the other. And I'll tell you what, he's good for nothing. Because he don't know what the heck he's doing. There's too many mug wumps in the church. Yeah, some of us need a slap upside the head and maybe God will get our attention. Because you can't make God give you a solid experience. If he does anything after it, it's, it's all his choice. Trust me. I ain't got nothing to do with my experience, but it got my attention. And that's the only reason I'm still alive to get today, because of the grace of God. I don't have nothing to do with it. But while I'm here, I want to listen to the voice of the Father, and I want to provoke people to be everything God has truly called you to be. Not be some religious idiot, a church attender, and no fruit. Everybody in the Jesus house should be out. Man, 
If I could and have the time, I got a lot of stuff going on, but I want to get them out on the streets and show you how to do it. Just walk around, just show, you know, just learn to be friendly. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever. It's, e it's easy. It's easy. It's so easy. It'll blow your mind. You have opportunities every day. Every one of us. Yeah. Team Wellness, Detroit Rescue Mission. You ain't gonna have money to do this. If you ain't got money, you're probably better off because you ain't in a hurry to spend nothing. You got more time to talk to people. Seriously. How many people here, God is in you? You're saved for real. For real. You know you're saved. Just raise your hand. All right. Let's challenge. Let's let God challenge us today. That's all I'm going to say. I was going to read different scriptures, but that, that's all that needs to be said. I love you enough to tell you what I believe is the truth. But the bottom line is heaven and hell is real. And everybody on this planet is either saved or they're not. I'm saved. I don't care how nice you are, how much you go to church, that does not say you. you need to know Jesus for real. And the real Jesus, not the counterfeit Jesus. There you go. Come Paul on, even brother. said, if I are an angel from heaven come and tells you about any other Jesus than the one I told you about, let him be a curse. If an angel comes, don't look, there's a lot of crazy Jesus out here. A lot of pet to Jesus, you know, like a, a genie bottle Jesus. That ain't the real, the real Jesus. That's part of his eyes. And he loves you to life. And he wants to know you personally. So is there anybody here you need to know Jesus tonight? You've never really given it up to Jesus and you want Jesus. You've never been born again. You've never been saved. Anybody here? I know probably everybody here has heard this and probably most people have seen it. So now you're saying, Christ is in me, God's in me. I ain't got to tell you what to do. You just heard what we all need to do. We need, we need to step up our game. This ain't no joke. This ain't like some religious instruction. This is the word of God for our lives. Got to take it to another level. We got to hunger and thirst after righteousness. And then we'll be filled so much that you've got to tell someone. So get hungry. Eat at God's table. Open that Bible. You don't open the Bible, you ain't hungry. Open the Bible. Make yourself read it. Hit yourself in the head. Throw cold water in your face. Do whatever you got to do. You're here to be a disciple of Jesus. That's what this is all about. Let's stand up. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord God. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord, for being merciful, kind, gracious, and compassionate to us. Thank you for Barbara King here. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor Barbara, for the years of sweat, blood, sweat, and tears. Her and Mark and her husband and her son that went to be with the Lord. Put in the ministry. Now she's in her latter years. She can barely walk, probably barely talk. So who's gonna who's gonna take the baton? She was always an extrovert, from what I hear. She talked about the Lord. So she's getting to the point where she just, you know, physically not in a position to get out there. So who's who's gonna carry the ball? Who's who's gonna become the next Barbara King, Clarence King, big mouths for Jesus? We got to do this, folks. If this generation don't get it, especially now with all this craziness going on, we're hit. We better buck up and we better sign up for God's army. And his army ain't a bunch of loose goose flakes. They're serious Christians. God has chosen us to be a soldier. Amen. That's what the Bible That's says, right. a soldier. Soldiers listen and obey. There's no other. Hoorah! So let's get busy about the Father's business while I pray to every one of us just take this to heart. Yeah, I like to stop with a song or something, but let's let the word settle in. And let's just go and be blessed, have some fellowship and food in Jesus' name. Amen. We're done. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Food. Let me get that. Want to take that? His name is Nick. Nick who? He's a twin. Oh, the guy you told me about. Yeah. yeah cool. He said PFC. Prayer, oh. fellowship, church. All right, good. God bless you guys. All right. Hey, girl. Hi, sir. We're out of here. I got to prolong this. We're going to wind down. Get you some sleep tonight. You think about what we've been talking about. This is serious. And we love you. What's your name, girl? Ava. You ever been here? No, it's my first time. I've only been in Detroit for 10 days. Where'd you come from? I am originally from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, but I spent the majority of my life in Hawaii. Okay. So you just got to Detroit? Yeah. 
Well, good to see you. Yeah, that's right. Are you a, a team wellness or what? Okay. Well, make sure you jump on the bus every time they say peacemakers. That's your prayer, buddy? Okay, cool. Cool. All right. Well, cool. Well, yeah, maybe maybe you can get on the bus with the guys in the house. Yeah, in fact, you could talk to... See if, see if they, you can hook her up for Tuesday night. All right. How you doing, brother? You okay? All right. Be blessed. All right, I'm out of here. You be blessed. Say goodbye to one of the neighbors. So give us your name, rank, and serial number. Are you saved? You know Jesus. All right, start telling other people. God bless you, brother. All right.